All right, so on the last video with the VB WRX, you guys saw us build it from a streetcar to more of like an overland car. At the same time, like you've seen some crazy out there overland builds. I mean, check out this guy chasing point. His videos and his content is insane. That's like what I think of when I think of an overland car. And this isn't quite there. Outside of that, you know, it was kind of in this weird state currently where we weren't exactly sure what to consider it. And it's mainly because we haven't really had the time to go out into the world and actually drive the car and get to experience sort of a, a, a rally stage, if you will, or really overlanding. Hey, Tiny. Let's get started for the day. All right, so I'm about to take the VBWRX on one of its first like big real like adventures since we have lifted the car and done some stuff to it and uh the friends that we have at Perrin uh have been happy enough to send us out quite the care package full of stuff that they make for the car so i thought what better time to create some content of these new parts than on this awesome big adventure tiny a lot of this stuff is less than super fun to try to install all in one day and we have quite the list of parts i mean Got a Jenga block of parts in here. We got also some rally armor mud flaps put on there for all your mud. All right guys, so we got the intake tube in there with the map sensor installed. So the last step, at least for the intake side of things, not the air box, is to put the air filter on. And I'm uh, holding it in the bag to not get any of the oil on me because this is a foam filter with oil for catching all those particulates. So we're going to go ahead and install this and then the intake side of things will be done. So obviously we got the intake in. This is like the probably the largest, most involved piece that we're going to put in today. Uh, the rest of it, we're just going to do a time lapse so you can just kind of watch it work, listen to the music, hang out, relax, and then we'll talk about it some more when we're all done. And as soon as this is done in the video, you guys will see me start going on a trip up north to Duluth, Minnesota, if you guys know where that is. Uh, so stick around and we're going to go do some fun stuff with an Overland VBWRX, or try to at least. All right, so we've gotten all the parts installed in the engine bay that we're gonna be putting in from Perrin. We still have the transmission mount that's left. And well, I guess we also still have the strut brace mount, but that'll be pretty quick to install. Tiny right now is working on getting the wheels off so we can start installing these rally armor mud flaps. I think that's really gonna take the build and uh, really make it look the part of an overland car. So we're gonna uh, get the wheels off, start installing the mud flaps, and uh, that should help really complete the look here. We, we do have the, the light bar off, but that'll go back on for the weekend. Uh, let's get these in. All right, so as you guys saw, we got the FUD maps on. Uh, we got all the parent stuff. I said FUD maps on purpose, the mud flaps on. We got the parent engine bay stuff on. So the last piece of the puzzle is our uh, good old tranny mount put on in here. As you guys saw the last, no, two episodes ago, uh, we did like the Cobb short shifter and all the shifter goodies. So this will just, oh, you can't even really see it. It's so tucked away in here, but yeah, we have our short throw shift plate. So this will just complement the rest of the drivetrain mods that we've already done. And this thing is on its way to being fully bolted. Fully bolted? Yeah. A fully bolted VB? That's right.
So now we are done with the transmission mount. We're done with every piece of the engine dress up, except for one thing that I forgot about for the very end, which is this. Dude, you could play that like the guitar. I wasn't a pizza spinner sign guy in my past life. All right. Rock star, you know what I'm saying? Strut tower brace. This is the last piece of the puzzle, and it'll be all paired up. I uh, I didn't think about something, Charlie. Yeah. We've got this big honking Cobb intercooler. It's probably gonna be a problem, huh? I hope not. We'll find out. We'll find out. Well, I know for the STI, um, that one like snakes around the backside. <laughs> Hopefully, this one does too. Otherwise, we're gonna have a little bit of a little bit of a pickle here. All right, so we're trying to fit the strut bar in, and it's looking. A little less promising yeah, than the, we thought. This is uh, this is like a what we call this a test fit. Uh, yeah, it's looking like uh, this this here Cobb intercooler and Perrin strut bar are uh, we're gonna call these incompatible. Well, what we might do then is uh, pick a random winner down in the comments. If you own a BBWRX and are interested in this Perrin strut bar brace, let us know down in the YouTube comments, and uh, you could win yourself this mildly test fit. Uh, Perrin strut brace mount. So if you want to win one of those, leave us a comment down below and we'll pick someone randomly to win it. Uh, otherwise, this thing is pretty much done. So we'll wrap this install session up and get this thing ready for the road trip. So the interesting thing about some of the Perrin parts is that they're not necessarily compatible with some of the existing parts that we had on the car. Uh, the only thing we weren't really able to install because of that was the Perrin strut bar. Something to keep in mind and if you're unsure, the nice thing is we've obviously got sales guys that you can call to talk to and ask and through some testing like this we should have the answers for you. Some of the different pulleys that would require quite a bit of disassembly um, just didn't make it in because we had quite a few other things to install today. It wasn't a very lengthy process altogether. Um, everything went relatively smooth and before I knew it I was ready to uh, pack up the car and get on the road for my road trip. So uh, for my overall weekend road trip, I had quite the path planned to get up to Split Rock Lighthouse. First day was Friday, and on Friday my goal was to basically just get up to the Duluth area. Got some family that lives up there, so that was the first leg of the trip, relatively short. All right, so it's uh, seven o'clock in the morning. Uh, I'm up north. However, the next day was when the rally stage began. All right, so. <clears throat> I think we're finally, today, gonna figure out a little bit about what this overlanding craze is really about. We're gonna have a little bit of fun with the WRX and we're gonna see some pretty cool stuff. We're gonna do the North Shore Scenic Drive after we're done kind of experimenting with some rocky terrain. I made my way out to a forest called the Ditch Bank Forest. The way that I would convey what it is I was looking for was essentially something that would be mirroring what you might see on like a, a Ojibwe forest rally type of road. Um, that was kind of the vibe I was going for and the type of road I was looking to try and experience. So the tough thing about the car in this condition is, you know, the lift kit does really great for allowing a little extra ground clearance under the car, but in terms of how it handles, it still feels a bit like a car would on lowering springs. This is not obviously suspension that's designed for anyone to go take it off any sort of jumps, uh, but if you wanted to go and enjoy some nice gravel roads, these tires were phenomenal. Uh, and ultimately at the end of the day, we had a little extra ground clearance. So getting over things like bumps, or whatever else I may have encountered along the trail that would have normally seemed impossibly daunting were easily tackled. After getting my photos and realizing that we don't quite yet have exactly a rally car, I was eager to go and check out some of the other things that we could do with the car, like uh, just kind of taking it on a nice cruise on a road trip without having to worry about you know any sort of obstacles that I would encounter. And thus began the trip from the Cloquet, Minnesota area up to Split Rock Lighthouse. Driving up to the lighthouse was actually a super smooth drive. It's actually one of those really cool, fun, like scenic drives. All right, so we're technically at the start of the scenic road. It's uh, technically Old Highway 61. All right, so we made it up to the lighthouse. I guess we're gonna go in and check it out. It makes sense to go into the lighthouse. So uh, yeah, we're on the first real adventure with the car, so 
we'll see where this takes us. Then once we got up to the lighthouse, the scenery really changed pretty dramatically. I mean, once we got up there, all of a sudden there were all these exposed rocks along the highway, like they had really carved their way through the mountain there. So, I mean, after that was all done, I mean, it was just time to cruise, cruise back. And I, I think for me, at least the conclusion was that the car was really great for getting me to those destinations. It was really great for handling relatively uh, rocky terrain. My recommendation to you guys who, you know, were curious and potentially doing this to your car is just to just to go for it. Um, and I know that sounds like some obvious advice that someone from my seat would give, but if I'm being honest with you, this is some of the most fun I've had behind the wheel of a car in quite some time. Um, just being able to put the car in any scenario, know that it'll handle it. So if you guys are interested in any of these products, they are actually all available on our website now, including the lift kit from Eibach. Um, so go ahead and check that out if you're considering doing that for your VBWRX. Otherwise, any other parts you need for any other car you have, make sure you check us out, give our sales guys a call. They'll help you towards the right path. Until next time, we'll see you in the next video.